We're here for another Please Don't Let, one of my most anticipated books of the year, not be five stars again. Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Katie Coulson here. Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing a reading vlog for, I think, all of BookTube's most anticipated book of the year, and that's Babel by R.F. Kuang. Now, you can't see it because they're on this side, but I read the Poppy War trilogy and while the first one I gave three stars because I was just kind of confused and it was kind of slow and like building, the second one I gave four stars, the third one, three stars. The Burning God, one of the best books I read last year. And I was like, okay, is that going to happen in this book? Like it's a standalone, which one I appreciate because I don't have to wait for the ending. But I was like, oh my God, like, because it'll take me a while to get invested if it isn't action oriented. So I am a little afraid going into this, but I've heard nothing but absolutely phenomenal things about this book. Like nothing but phenomenal things. Everybody that got an arc gave it five stars. Everyone that's read it like in the last two weeks that it's been out has given it five stars. It's just a raging success. So I'm going to hope that me not really being in my fantasy bag is not going to mess this up because can you imagine if I don't like this? Like I might get canceled. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm having a great time because I'm not. Like I literally might get canceled. Okay, let's hope for the best and let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? Hello. We are beginning a new reading vlog because we have one of the most anticipated books of the year. Like everybody's most anticipated. And this, I do believe it's a standalone and I'm kind of scared to start it because I haven't really been in my like fantasy bag and I haven't really been in my like, I have to be smart to read this moment, you know? And this feels like, it's got two maps. Like this feels like Oh, too intelligent for me. But I can't wait to start it because, well, I'm scared and can't wait to start it because every single person that I know that has gotten an arc of this and read it has given it five stars and absolutely adored it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start reading it and then I'm going to wait until I'm enough of the way in that I feel like I can tell you what it's about. Because even though I've heard people say what it's about, I feel like I'm kind of getting misinformation. Like I'm skewing the information in my head. So I'm going to start this and hit you back up with a summary. Hi, hello. Um, it is quite a few days later. I have only spent two and a half of those, I think, actually reading this book. And the rest of it, I have not been reading anything except manga. And I am on page 140. And there are so many words on each page. Oh my god. You think you've gotten so much farther. And like, the, I don't know. I'm sure there's so many people out there that are like, what are you talking about? That's nothing. Whoo, okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm having a great time because I'm not, but this book is not bad. I'm going to tell you the experience I'm having reading this as the reader that I am, not as this book as a whole. You know what I'm saying? This book is very well written. RF Kuang is undeniably a genius. She is fantastic. Like, love it. But I am not the kind of reader that she writes books for. Now, in the, okay, in the Poppy War, when I read the Poppy War, I thought it was okay. That was good. I think I gave it three stars. I was like, okay, this was confusing for me. You know, there was a lot of stuff I didn't understand and it just went over my head. And I wasn't really like super invested in the characters yet. And then in the Dragon Republic, when I got halfway through the Dragon Republic, I was like, okay. Okay, we're out here making moves. Gave it four stars. And then the Burning God, ah, fucking loved it. One of my favorite books of last year, five stars. But this is standalone. I don't have three giant books to get me invested in these characters and in what's going on and like not really even caring about the, the world anymore, just caring about them. In this, here's the thing. So far, there is a lot of focus on our main character, Robin, but the majority of the writing in this is world building. And personally, I do not give a single shit about world building. I do not care because I am not somebody who can read something and picture it. I'm so jealous of all y'all that could be doing that. I can't do that. I just can't. I can't. Now, if I look up fan art of a character or of the landscape of the houses and stuff, then I'll never forget. I'm like, okay, that's what that looks like. Got it. And it's in my head forever. 
And that's what I did with the poppy war. That literally, well, after I was done with the poppy war and then I looked up what they were supposed to look like, I was like, that was not what I was thinking, but cool. Um, so in this, this is so much world building. And if you like that, you'll love this because RF Kuang is amazing, fantastic. But I swear to God, I'm 140 pages in. I've been reading this for three days or like, I mean, technically five days is when I started it, it was five days ago. And I'm like, are we going to get to the fucking point? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like being a downer and it really has nothing to do with this book. It's just me as the reader of this book. Anyway, so basically we're following this boy named Robin and a very sudden cholera outbreak happens in his town and basically everybody but him dies. Like everyone around him is dying. And this professor, Professor Lovell, shows up and is like, here, hold this and gives him some silver. And the way that he reacts to the silver makes Lovell see something in him, like see that he has some sort of gift and he basically adopts him, just picks him up, takes him on this boat and is like, we're going to Oxford, my dude. And then just drops him off at Oxford and is like, have a great time. Here's a full ride scholarship and just leaves him there. But then it has like a um, very secret history vibes of like most of the characters, even though I can't remember like basically any of their names because we just got introduced to like six people all at once. And I'm like, who are y'all? Okay, whatever. Um, they're all rich and snobby. I can tell you that. Some of them are girls, some of them are boys. And it's not like an all boys school god bless um but we get introduced to them and they're like kind of rich and snotty because they're paying to go here and they studied to go here but then our main character robin just got thrown into this and he's not paying a dime and he gets a stipend like he basically gets an allowance every week and there are characters in this book that are like broke because all they can afford is to go to the school and then like he's giving them money and it's very interesting like it is it definitely has secret history vibes but with the secret history, you know from the very beginning it's a murder and that you're trying to figure out what happened. And in this, you're thrown into this world that like the main character has no idea what's happening. And like apparently this like Oxford like school and it's in like the early 18, it's like 1828 or 1828. Yeah, apparently I do remember something. Um, there's like silver is like magical and it like silver bars are what like make magic be able to happen i don't know but i'll tell you that i just got introduced to a character you know i don't want to spoil anything because it is on page like 140 but i just got introduced to a character i don't even know what to say without spoiling it that i'm very intrigued about but also like i'm just not having a fantastic reading experience because it's just boring it's just boring to me i'm sorry i'm sorry okay I'm gonna keep reading this and hopefully I'll hit you back up in less than five days. It is a couple hours later and I am here to apologize for my previous behavior. I'm having a really bad day. It's like anything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong in the most annoying, repetitive way. And it's just, oh my God, I'm so angry. Like every little thing is going wrong today. And it's 5 p.m. and I've literally got nothing done because even the tiniest little thing that I need to get done, there's just something that's out of whack that I can't do it. Like even the tiniest thing is that I was going to Dunkin' Donuts and I wanted to get this new flavor ice latte they had, but you can only order it through the app, which is stupid in my opinion, but whatever. So I'm trying to order it through the app. And mind you, I have ordered through the app plenty of times. But now all of a sudden today, no, payment not complete, payment not complete, payment not complete. I Google it and apparently the, people are having this problem a lot. And I'm like, then fix it. What are you talking about? Anyway, I go to the Dunkin' and I'm like, listen, I'm not dealing with this app anymore. Like, I can show you I have the app. I can show you that I tried to place the order. I have money. Just give me the drink. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, fine. So I haven't tasted it yet. It looks like it's just milk. Like, I mean, I swear, I get it. I get it. You know, they're not like artists. They're not baristas. But this looks like it's going to be terrible. Like, it literally looks like it's just milk. Anyway, this is supposed to be the vanilla brown sugar iced latte also i'm gonna go ahead and apologize again because i'm sure i'm gonna hate this and i'm gonna just be ranting but uh i'm having a bad day and i needed to update so you're getting me you're getting angry katie hi uh it's it's milk this is literally just milk there's no coffee in this at all 
What's the point? Like, what's the point? It's literally just milk. Like, it doesn't taste bad, but what's the point? Like, I don't understand why Duncan does this. Like, nobody wants milk. They come there for coffee. It's Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Anyway, I'm going to shut up because I'm just going to sit here in this parking lot that's totally empty. I pulled in this parking lot because it's totally empty so that I can just scream in my car. So that's what I'm going to do. How is the day really going to do me like this? How is the day really going to do me like this? Like, not only did I go to the gas station because I needed to get gas, and I was like, that's like the thing that I should obviously be able to do. And when I get there, there's a huge ass line because only one pump is working out of 12. You've got to be making that up. Like, what are you fucking talking about? So I'm like, okay, guess I'll just get to E then. And then I go to two different ATMs and both of them say they're not accepting cash right now. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So then I'm going to go home, okay? And it was just sunny as shit outside. It's only 5 p.m. And at this time of year, doesn't get dark. Sun doesn't set until eight. And then this happens. Literally like right as I'm pulling in, it's just downpour. And I have my book with me. I can't carry it in the rain. Is this reading vlog about Babel or is it about how bullshit my life is right now? gonna hide it from you but you can see it it's 1 30 in the morning okay and of course not until like 8 p.m did I hit my first wind of the day like I was so freaking tired and so annoyed I hope that I do not I was telling Grace I was on the phone with her and I was like if I don't start my period tomorrow I'm actually gonna have to look at my actions I'm actually gonna have to look at myself and be like why are you so angry like <laughs> girl calm down anyway I was feeling a lot of emotions in the bad way while I was reading this and it tainted my experience. But something that I've discovered about reading this book is that you can tell I've gotten a huge chunk of this read today. I've read like over a hundred pages today because I'm on page 320 right now. So I have just started book four and I am really liking it. I'm really liking it. Like this is such a 180 from the way I was feeling before. I mean, not a complete 180, but the reason that I was not liking this as much in the beginning was because I was reading like 20 pages at a time, like if 20, because each page does take a while in the audio. But I was following along with the book because I really needed to like see the characters' names and the Chinese words and stuff like that. But I was reading it like, oh, 16 pages here, 24 pages here. Okay. And I was like getting so lost in the story and not really understanding what was going on. But today when I have just had my headphones on and I'm paying attention, like at no point has the audio speed been over two times, like none period. It's like usually like 1.8. Um, I did two times for like just a little bit, but I am paying attention to this and listening to it back to back to back is so much better for me. Like I am, in, I'm, I'm like invested. I'm like, okay like putting myself in this world, like, okay, these are the characters, this is what's going on. It's not like I'm hearing a bunch of info dump and then stepping away for half a day or a day and coming back and being like, what, what? Like right now it's like a fluid story and I'm really enjoying it. I think that this has hella The Secret History vibes. Like it is so The Secret History, except if the entire cast of The Secret History, if like none of them were assholes, because in the secret history, like literally every single character is a supreme douchebag. They're all pretentious little shits that need to calm down and sit down and literally never open their mouth again. But I love that book. This is like, if you took the secret history, but they all had hearts of gold. <laughs> except, except Lovell. Lovell can fucking choke. Lovell can choke. This professor man, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if he turns out to be like the freaking Professor Snape in the end and turns around and actually has everybody's heart in mind and their intentions are pure. I don't give a fuck. He's a dick. He is a dick. Hey, disgust. Also, Rami, I need to know. Like, if you read this book, there are some sexual things. Like, maybe some possible sexual things are happening and I need to know. I need it to be stated. Like, not even, like, not even, like, stated, stated, but I need to, like, an, enough of a hint for me to be like, I see you. Um, really enjoying it. 
I really love Victor. I keep saying Victor. Vicker, um, the girl, love it. Levy or Letty, love it. Um, they're all just such different personalities. And I love that RF Kwan has done racism, like ethnic cultural representation, but so much racism in this book in so many different ways. Like, um, not only is there like a black character who is obviously like Vicker is not well seen in 1828 <laughs> in England, but, um, Robin being a like Mandarin Chinese boy is also not seen as very, is not seen as good. And I think that is very interesting is because it's not that he's like white. I mean, I guess I can say he's white passing. They don't really say that specifically, but he is of such a skin tone and hair color and, and eye color that people don't believe that he's Chinese and they talk such shit about Chinese people. And he's like, um, actually I'm Chinese. And they're like, no, you're not. You're hilarious. And it's disgusting. It's so disgusting. It's disgusting. Like I can't. <sighs> anyway, um, so far what's going on in this book, um, I was talking to Grace and I was telling her that I am not somebody that retains historical information. So I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that I've learned in my life about England and China and their relations with each other and what's going on in the 1800s and the like like there's a big um thing about the beginning of the opium epidemic in China and how Britain was funding it and like kind of force feeding it to them and like literally feeding them opium and and but then being like oh my god no it's just consumerism it's just about consumerism and then they're like okay well then why is it illegal to smoke opium in England then if it's so great, then why are you not allowed to do it? Anyway, um, that's going on in this. And the reason I know so much about that is because I've read The Poppy War. And The Poppy War, it's literally what it's about. Like, the war, that's literally what it's about. So this is just, like, a different take on a, a similar timeline. Even though this is, like, before The Poppy War would have begun. Anyway, they're not set in the same world. If they are, oh my god. Can you imagine? No. But... No. But, I mean, it's just, uh, ooh, I, don't know, I 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 don't know. If Fang Marin didn't show up in this story, none of these characters would stand a goddamn chance. These characters are cute, but Fang Marin is that bitch. <laughs> like, she would slaughter all of them and be smiling and literally not lose a wink of sleep about it. Have you read The Poppy War? It's fantastic. Anyway, um, I am really enjoying this, but I still, it's still not reading like a five star, but I think it is reading like, a definitive five star for so many other people. Like, I think this book is beautifully done, beautifully crafted, historically, like, ethnically, all of the shit is just, and the misogyny in this book, the misogyny. <sighs> There's just so many characters that are just pieces of literal trash that it, they're coming in contact with, and I just can't. Anyway, I think that what this is about, um, which I didn't even like really read the summary before going in. So LOL, Grace told me this is literally in the summary. So I was like, might as well talk about it. But um, this is kind of the, I don't know if it's the, I'm, I'm assuming the beginning of the big like fight and toxicity between England and China and how China is someone who produces a lot of goods for um, the UK, the USA, like so many different people. And while the USA and the UK um, import from China, they don't really export much to China. Like opium was like the real big thing that they were doing. And they kind of recognize that they can't live without China, but China can live without them. So now China is being seen as a threat where Britain is still trying to like buck up and be like, no, we're the big bad guy. Like we're the one that has all like the steel in this book. Um, we're the one that are the silver, sorry, it has all the silver, but in reality, they're way weaker than they seem. So that is very interesting to me. Um, kind of those political maneuverings. I'm liking that. But again, the biggest feeling I have is Lovell can suck a dick. Unless he's into that, then he'll n then never get to suck a dick again. Anyway, I wish I could finish this. There's no fucking way. There's literally no way. I wish I could finish it tonight. My hope, I don't think I'll be able to finish it tomorrow. But that's going to be my hope. Wait, wait. I'm like, I'm like five more pages in. And what the fuck? I'm out here talking about the secret history, and then that happens? Art of Kwong's favorite book has got to be the secret history, I swear to God. 
I heard a god. And then also, okay, I'm not going to talk about what happened that was like, hella the secret history. But something that is a super homage to the secret history is that um, in the secret history, the character, like a main character that the murder mystery is based around is called Bunny. That's not his name, but they call him Bunny. And then the main character in Babel's first name is Robin. And they call him, or Rami calls him Birdie. And I was like, Bunny and Birdie are right, Kwong. I see you. I should have you there in about 20 minutes, sir. Now, here is your next mission. Your target is the head of the <laughs> National Union. <laughs> so Army, ridiculous. Donovan Desmond, a grave threat to the truce between East and West. You'll need him in probe for any seditious activity. In order to achieve this, you must get married and have a child. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Due to his suspicion... All right. I threw away my identity when I became Twilight. So I'll take on the role of father, if it means the world will be a safer place. I'm li what, what am I, four minutes in? And I'm obsessed. <laughs> like, I just, I have every hope. I have every hope, every expectation. This will be fantastic. There's, there's no need for knocking on wood. I know it's gonna be great. It's gonna be... Whew, I'm excited. Okay, is it 3 a.m.? Yeah, let's watch the entire show. Uh, excuse me. Eaton College only accepts students six and up. This girl looks no older than four or five. Six! Huh? I'm six! You're six years old? <laughs> She's quite small for that age. I... I love her so much. Anya... Protect Anya at all costs. I'm obsessed with her. I know this video is supposed to be about this, but listen, it's about multiple things now, okay? I I love Spy Family. Have you not read this manga? It's literally fucking phenomenal. It's not working. I don't understand why she behaves like this. <laughs> it's so fucking cute! Anya? Uh, Papa! Uh, you're still here. I mean, what are you doing outside of the house? I was just out playing tag with some old guys. Oh, did you have fun? No words. <sighs> no words. Okay, I am on Readings Friends with Jordaline for her spooky smart bitch readathon. And I am about to start listening to is it Babel or Babel? I swear to God, we're having this huge debate on which one it is pronounced. <sighs> I don't know. But last night I got to chapter 20. And Jordaline was telling me that she didn't really like this book and she loves the secret history. And now I'm like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit more vindicated in that I'm not loving it, but I am liking it. Like uh, so far I'm liking it more than she did, but it's just making me feel better because I have only seen people giving it five stars. And I think that while this book absolutely is a five star for a lot of people, I can already tell you that no matter how the second half of this book goes, it's not going to be five stars because it's not the book for me. It's just not the book for me. Uh, RF Kwong is a fucking genius. I've said it many times in this video, and I'll say it many more times. But um, it's not really making me, like, desperately want to pick the book up and read it. 
which is, you know, what you want. But I am going to finish it, and I am hoping that I will like the ending. But dear God, the, the freaking cliffhanger that we ended off on right before I went to sleep. <laughs> Bro. And also, I swear to God, I read or I watched three episodes of Spy Family. It's so good. It's so good. If you have any access to watch this, if you don't, if you don't want to read the manga, you're like, I don't have the time. I don't want to pay the money. Watch the show. It's so good. Like it's just as good as the manga. And I have read the entirety of all the manga that has been released so far. And I've only seen three episodes and I'm telling you that it is fucking iconic. It's so good. It's so sweet. It's so funny. It's so adorable. Like it's just going to make your heart so happy. And I can't wait to binge the rest. Like, honestly, I'll be surprised if I don't binge the rest of the first season today. But anyway, while we're on a long sprint, I have to go to the ATM. Hopefully. I'll be able to go to the ATM because we all know what happened yesterday. But anyway, I am, oh wait, no, I need to take my trash out too. Okay, anyway, I'll hit you back up when I get back and start sprinting. Y'all, I just can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I'm so close to the end and yet so far away. There is 60 more pages of this and it's two and a half hours on the audiobook. This audiobook is 21 hours long. It's 21 and a half hours long. I'm just over it. I'm just over it. Like, I I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to hit you back up when I finish it because I am over it. It is 1 a.m. And I am happy to say that I finished Babel, Babel. I don't fucking know. I mean, there's a big chasm of people on either side of this bridge of, is it Babel or Babel? I don't know. And literally, listen, I would care more if I was planning on keeping this book. I'm not. Hopefully I'm going to hit you back up in the next clip with like a more succinct summary because it's 1 a.m. and I'm just so happy this is over. I'm just so happy because again, I really don't want my interpretation of this book to be like the generic interpretation of this book because I am not the reader for this book. But for me, for me, Katie Coulson, I was not intrigued, like really to keep reading this. Um, th there's a lot of things that I thought were good. But like, say, I thought that um, the cultural, ethnic, and like uh, race representation, the misogynistic representation, um, so much like societal norms and cultural like um, expectations and realities were fantastic in this book. I really do think that. But I'm not somebody who like is a big historic reader. And there are things that I would just believe and then go, if I actually knew about history, like maybe I'd be able to fact check this, but I'm just going to assume RF Kuang knows way more than I ever could. And that she's totally right on everything. And there was a lot of like, I feel like if you took the secret history and legend born, actually, that's a great comparison. If you took the secret history, like the setting of the secret history, but then had like the trials and the characters of Legendborn, it would be this book. But I wasn't expecting it to be as YA as it feels. Like that is something, I think that this book reads way more YA than I was anticipating. I thought that this was going to be an adult book, but I get it, like they're in college, but I thought it was going to be like new adult or maybe we started when he was a kid and then ended when he was adult. And like technically he's an adult, like he's in his 20s in this book, but it read very YA. It was very naive. It was very like big emotions when you have emotions and um, throwing yourself into like feelings and relationships and all these things. So I don't know, like I just, I want to commend RF Kuang for doing what she did because I see it. Like I recognize genius when I see it, I do. But for me, if it was without the cultural representation and the racism and misogyny, I would give this two stars. But because of that, I'm like, I kind of want to give it three stars, but I didn't like, I was so happy when this book was over. I just wanted it to be over. And also the ending, no. Letty and Lovell can fucking choke. Get bent, bitch. Like literally both of those characters, I was like, I'm going to dress you up as an orca and throw you into it, or a shark and throw you into an orca tank. Like that's how I felt. Hate them. Anyway, I'm going to give this two and a half stars. I'm really sorry to say that. Maybe I won't rate it on Goodreads because I don't want to lower the ratings of this on Goodreads. I really don't want to lower the ratings because I think I'm not the person that should be rating this. Anyway, 
Um, I'm going to give this two and a half stars, very sadly, and I am going to continue because it's, you know, one something I am. I'm going to continue watching Spy Family Volume 1 on Crunchyroll because when I tell y'all, it is every, f every scene of this anime. It fills my heart with such joy. Like, it is so sweet. It's so cute. Like, this is how the girlies were feeling, how I was feeling when I read Heartstopper and then I watched Heartstopper and I was like, oh my god, it's done so well. Like, they did it perfectly like i am watching the dubbed version of the anime on crunchyroll and it's fantastic and you don't normally find that like these voice actors are killing it killing it it's so good so i'm going to continue watching that and hopefully get my morale back up quick pop in before the end to say that i totally forgot to tell you that i got to episode seven of spy family and it is exquisite 10 out of five stars so fucking good if you don't read manga. Just go watch it. Just watch it. Watch it. It's so good. It will fill your heart with such joy. It's adorable. Anyway, that's not what this reading vlog is about, but I had to say it. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, I stick by everything that I said in the last update. I do stick by that. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think I'm going to give this two and a half stars. I think I'm going to give it two and a half stars I kind of don't want to rate it, but then at the same time, I'm like, I did read the whole thing and I and took the story like as much as I possibly could. And it's not for me. I feel as though it was very slow. Um, and then the action that would happen would be very fast. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? Oh, shit. And then why did they have to do my boy like that? If you know, you know, if you've read this book, hate crime. Hate crime, hate crime, hate crime. Arf Kong, why? Anyway, <laughs> I'm literally, I'm so bitter about it. Um, I think that Arf Kong is a genius, but I did not like this book. And then Jordaline and I were talking about it yesterday and she also, she did not like it. She gave it three stars though, but her giving it three stars, talking about how much she didn't like it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it two and a half stars because I would have felt bad in giving it three stars, but I really, like there were things about it that I liked, but the story overall, I didn't like. I just felt like it was really focusing a lot on, especially in the middle, it was just focusing so much on being the secret history. Like there's like a good chunk of that book that is just a retelling of the secret history. I'm like, I get it. You're paying uh, homage, but like, you don't have to be like that blatant about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then also, I don't know. Like I love the representation, all that stuff, but it's not for me. I didn't enjoy it. I'm sad to say it. I'm going to be unhauling it. I'm so sorry. I mean, that's amazing. If any of y'all loved it, God bless. God bless. Um, if you've gotten this far into the video, I don't think there's a silver. Is there like silver emoji? If there isn't a silver emoji, then just leave the emoji of anything that like reminds you of silver. Um, it could be like a locket. It could be a key. It could be jewelry. It could be anything or even like uh, something gray. So if you don't know what to comment, then leave that down below. I want to thank you, even though you're probably bummed out from this video. I want to thank you for sticking it out to the end. If you want to like this video or hit subscribe, you could always do that. I mean, it's your prerogative, but also do it. But also we're all watching you so do it and if you want to follow me on patreon that link is down below as well as link to my goodreads and my instagram if you feel so inclined to follow me on any other platform and with all of that being said i hope that you are having an amazing day evening night dusk dawn whatever you're having I like blacked out there for a second whatever you're having and whatever part of the world you're having it in thank you very much and i'll see you in a video coming very soon bye